Hello, my name is Renee Nicholson, and I am director of West Virginia University's Humanities Center. And we are one of the collaborating partners in WVU's long form scholarship celebration for 2022. And today I am chatting with Dr. Jared Sims, who's director of jazz at West Virginia University and has a new album, Against All Odds, which is part of this year's event. So excited to be talking to you today about the album and um, just wanted to start off by uh, asking you if you can describe your project to us. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, and, and thank you for, for uh, inquiring and uh, for all that you're doing with the Humanities Center. And it's, uh, it's a real pleasure. Um, I guess, I guess I, what I'd say with this project, the, the project and the album are one in the same. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a collection of different tunes that I wrote uh, kind of, I, I guess it was really last summer, but part, partly also during the pandemic just reflecting mm -hmm. on everything we were going through and everything that we're kind of still going through. Um, I guess the, the title track and also the name of the album is uh, Against All Odds, which it's, um, it's a reflection of my own father being on a ventilator for three months for something that wasn't COVID. Of course, when he went to the hospital, they thought it was COVID, but it was the West Nile uh, disease. So, um, so I guess artistically, uh, it's it's one of the more positive things. I, I tried to write a really positive piece because because he he made it through this whole or ordeal. So um, so th that was kind of the artistic parameter for me to kind of encapsulate these events that happened and figured out how to kind of package it in a way sonically that that would depict what was happening. So that was, that's an example of, of, of one thing. And then um, there were other just various uh, situations or feelings that, that were kind of uh, conveyed. And um, one, uh, what, what it was like to be waiting by the telephone for, for, for a phone call to come in. Um, there was uh, one that was uh, just simply about being outside with the flowers the we were stuck in our houses we could go outside and it was just uh as as uh as uh mundane as that might seem uh there was one piece that i woke up in the morning and i ran to the piano and i wrote it and it, it was called no name days i just kind of woke up and had this theme in my head and um there was one that i i don't like to talk about too much but it was it was about the loss of a student one of our wvu students and um, that particular piece has kind of its own um, kind of trajectory as well um, in terms of um, artistically, it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of somewhat classical at the beginning, or at least the harmonies that I use are very classical because that's, that's really what the student did. Um, and then it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty mournful piece. So, so, you know, a lot of the time, if we listen to uh, an album, it might have very similar emotions all the way through or a very similar sound. This, this kind of uh, has an ebb and a flow. And it, 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 frankly, I mean, if we, if we boiled it down to very simple things, it would be elation mixed with um, whatever the opposite of elation would be. Um, so it, it, it's kind of, it's, it's, um, it's a bit of a roller coaster. And then, I think I'd be remiss to not mention that there's a track called Dear Gaia, which I'm really excited about because it, it features Amy Alvarez, who happens to be my wife, but she's she's a great poet. And, Fantastic uh, the, poet. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the poem is, is Dear Gaia, and she wrote it that everybody remembers where we were in 2020 in March, uh, the day that they said, okay, we're, we're shutting down. All of us said, what are we doing? Um, we were basically saying goodbye to our students and we knew we wouldn't see them the same way again. And uh, that was, that was, the, that was her reflection of, of that. I mean, artistically it was, it was fun because people are always asking us to collaborate. And so <laughs> I was, I was able to take the, the blank canvas and kind of create a, a, 
a part of a, of a landscape in which she could come in and fill in the rest with, with her voice and her poetry. So I, I always like to say uh, jazz and improvisation is like a, like a picture mm -hmm. and uh, we're watching the, the, the picture being drawn or, or painted in yeah. real time, so. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a, a, an excellent metaphor, especially for those of us that, that aren't in music. I mean, that's one I think we can all get our head around. So you said you'd gone down to the piano. I also know you're a saxophonist. So uh, any other instruments that we should know about or? <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I might be different than a lot of musicians. Most musicians have a primary instrument. I guess I would call a saxophone my primary, but mm -hmm. there, there are four main saxophones that people play. And I, I tend to play all of them, but I also play clarinet, bass clarinet, flute, alto flute, and I play a whole lot of piano. Um, this instrument, this particular project or this album, um, someone in an interview told me that they thought that, uh, they thought it was very melodic. And the reason it would be is because most of this actually came from uh, playing the saxophone and just playing melodies that, that I thought were reflective of, of different things. And then I actually went and created the rest uh, on the piano. Uh, so I, I, I used the piano a lot to write. And I use technology to write as well. The, this, is, this album, probably the least amount of technology yet to the point where I'm I'm pretty obsessed with using technology to write music. This there was so little technology that when I went into the recording studio, I used um, handwritten manuscript, which I would never do, and I tell my students not to do. <laughs> interesting. So a lot of interesting things about process that changed with this particular album in a time of change. It was a time of change. I guess maybe it was so much Zoom and so, so much technology that I just went back the other way. You know, sure. just I, I, much, of, much of the material I actually wrote in one of my favorite spots, which is that grass right outside the Creative Arts Center. Nice. I, I, I like to play outside and I don't think my neighbors appreciate that much, or at least I would assume they wouldn't. So I, <laughs> I'm not gonna even push it. I'll, I'll go somewhere where I can make some noise outside, so. Um, nice. So yeah, it, it was the opposite of technology. It was it was really a departure, and, and I guess I'm, I'm kind of realizing now that now that was more of a subconscious thing when it was all happening. Sure, sure. So well, and and along these lines, because um, you know the long form scholarship event showcases you know long forms in, in multiple forms, and music is different than what a lot of academics do, which are books. So maybe you can kind of walk us through what scholarship looks like in your discipline and the what forms does it take? Yeah, very, very interesting because uh, it, it could be, uh, for, for me, for me, it tends to be more of a performance based. Mm -hmm. um, I, I travel quite a bit when I can. Um, I, of course, I play in Morgantown in Pittsburgh, now Washington, D.C. on a very regular basis, still in Boston where I was uh, internationally, whatever I can. We have a, a lot of possibilities and for international performing, just just simply just sharing music. So that's that's part of my research. The other part is is simply writing the music to take to these places, sure. uh, because as, as a jazz musician, we basically have two choices. One is to uphold the the tradition and the language of the music which i believe very firmly in, and i think that that's important especially as my role as an educator to uphold what the tradition is and that's a holistic thing that includes how we play the music and where the music came from of course mm -hmm. um the other side of jazz is, is just innovation which is basically you know playing ourselves but like just finding new ways to make music so um so for me personally, it's about performance. It's about writing music. It's about recording music. Um, I also do a whole lot of projects that are not academic, which I think also count as research. Um, uh, for instance, I did some things with Marty Schwartz, who has maybe two million followers on on uh, on YouTube, but uh, just just sharing music 
uh, jazz, jazz is kind of the key to a whole lot of different styles of music. It, it helps me, frankly, as a if I ever do classical music, but but also it, jazz is the key to jazz uh, to to funk, reggae, hip hop, rock music. It's all very connected. So I have those kind of more commercial possibilities. Um, in addition to just simply playing music and writing music, I've contributed to some magazines. So that that that's something that's possible. And uh, I think uh, the the other people who are similar at our peer institutions also publish music that, that can be performed by ensembles uh, or uh, rarely. It's actually more on the rare side that it, someone would write a textbook. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so uh, we do have a lot of textbooks. So it's nice, uh, you know, in this year's event. So it's nice to see the play of those things. Um, very, very interesting. Um, always in the performing arts, that, that performance uh, aspect. Uh, because it is ephemeral, um, but it's also vital, right? <laughs> it happens and the thing and then then the thing's gone, but that's 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 what keeps a performer going, right? So um, always really interesting to to uh, learn more about that. So kind of along those same lines, um, who or what are, are influences for you on, on these albums and these big projects? You know, I <laughs> It's it's so often that that I'm going to go back to some of the the the, the same players. I I love the saxophonist Joe Henderson. Um, for this particular record, I'm also thinking of Duke Ellington, who wrote many different suites. Uh, you know, the Queen Suite, Such Sweet Thunder, um, the various suites in which um, he's got some type of a theme, and mm -hmm. and. Uh, actually, the Far East Suite is one of the more compelling ones. I think if, if somebody were to look at all of them, I guess I, I think the Far East Suite is really, really compelling. Because uh, I'm sorry, it's not a jazz history lesson, but it's from it was just from 1964. The the band was on, or I should say, an orchestra. We should really call it a, a Duke Ellington Orchestra. Uh, right. They were on tour of the Middle East. They were in Iraq, Iran. Um, all these Lebanon, all these different countries in the Middle East, and it was cut short when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. But I, I love this particular song. It's called Isfahan. It was really written by Billy Strayhorn, which is Duke Ellington's collaborator. But it was about the beauty of, of, of the people there. And, you know, that, that really sits with me. And sure. uh, another, another influence would be, would be John Coltrane. Um, and... The reason is because he's he's regarded as one of the great saxophonists, one of the great jazz musicians, but he's also a commentator on what was happening. You know, he wrote the piece Alabama for the the young women in the church who were who were killed. Um, you know, he's very connected with civil rights. You know, things things that are very meaningful. Sure. So, in, in this, you know, it sounds like that these influences they were influenced by what was happening culturally in the moment. And this is an album that came out of the pandemic responding to a cultural moment as well. So it's, it's interesting just to listen to that and see the through line. Also, anytime you would like to give us a, a little uh, history lesson in jazz, cannot hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, well, I, I try to spare everybody. I, I think about <laughs> the history of jazz a lot, so. Well, um, perhaps uh, just pivoting a little bit more to the process, um, what do you think that other scholars across WB or just across all disciplines would find surprising about your process? Hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> I think one of the one of the things that we try to do in the creative arts is we try to to stay ahead of our students. We try to stay um, not ahead. I mean, they're pushing us. We have some really talented students, so um, we we have to make sure that what we're doing is something that speaks to them, and we have something to offer. Um, meaning, there's a lot of trends in music. Uh, jazz is a, a living, breathing art form that's constantly changing. And I think as we re reflect through the decades, there's different sounds that are happening. And of course, it's it's lost in the air and it's it's sometimes aesthetic, but there there are trends. And so I think 
for what I'm trying to do is try to remain aware of what the trends are and, and be on top of that. And a lot of what we do in the arts, and I, I don't think it's just me, but I think it's other professors as well, is uh, we have to be able to demonstrate what, what's happening um, on our instruments or through our music. And WVU is, the, the, is frankly a hub of arts in the community. And so this mm -hmm. is, that's part, part of what we're doing too. So I see it as very, very holistic. Uh, I, I keep coming back to that because for me, research, service, and teaching, <laughs> there's a lot of overlap between all of those. Um, you know, for instance, in, in the classroom, I'll have students write pieces that very well end up uh, in, in their own recordings mm. that they're making. Uh, so we're, we're mixing the classroom with their own artistic endeavors. Um, but, but then, of course, all of this has to do with tethering things with the tradition of the music, which is, you know, it's, uh, it's a reflection of the people who pioneered the music. Uh, black American music so it's it's uh, very holistic and it, it's hard to give you a, it's hard to give you a really encapsulated answer that's all right I mean I think that just understanding how those things um, are kind of in play with each other that that overlap and and the overlap with the way that you're teaching these students and then seeing that then that comes back around and is reflected in your own music it makes sense, you know, <laughs> and it all kind of comes together. Um, you know, thinking a little bit about process, um, do you have uh, any routines or rituals that, that play a role in your work? Hmm. I play the instrument, or I say the instrument, I play the saxophone every day. Mm -hmm. I, I should play the piano every day. I might actually get better at it, but um, <laughs> I guess as, a, as, a, as, an, as an artist, um, it's very physical. It's almost like a, a, it's almost like a sport to me. I'm not really an athlete, but, but I know what athletes do. We have to play every day. It's good for our mind and our body. And that's, that's frankly part of my ritual. If I were to try to do something creative, it would probably start with just simply improvising on some American songbook songs because everything's rooted to me and, um, the great works of Gershwin, Cole Porter, and so forth, the American Songbook. And that's that's kind of the home base. And uh, I would then take it from there. And um, it all depends on how much time that we have. But the 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 basic ritual is I I I spend at least an hour a day just just uh, getting my mind and body moving. Sure, sure. I love that that you mentioned Gershwin because as soon as you did, and knowing that you play clarinet, uh, I heard <laughs> that beginning to Rhapsody in Blue. <laughs> Which I, I think anybody who's played clarinet uh, will, will be familiar, and hopefully many that that even haven't. But um, this has been fascinating, and I wish we we had more time to talk about uh, all this. But uh, is there anything else you want to say? Uh, about against all odds or or any of your work to to wrap up um yeah i'm not i'm not, I'm not sure that i do i mean i i would say that um i think a, a really important thing about music is especially jazz music jazz music is about the live experience so um i think a recording is a close approximation and um i guess i guess a really important thing to think about with Probably, I'd say my last two projects, or my last two albums, is, in in a lot of ways, they're the launch pad for live performance. So, I'll leave it at that. That's perfect. Well, I thank you so much, and congratulations again on the album. Oh, thank you, and uh, my my friend says hello too. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, thank you.